Hello and welcome to this webinar presented by SmartEye. My name is Aaron Galbraith and I will be your host today. First off, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us uh, for this webinar today, and we hope that you'll find the webinar useful in understanding how head and eye tracking are helpful for automotive HMI research and development. Do you note that questions may be asked at any time during the presentation via the Q&A section of the interface? All questions will be queued until the end of the presentation, and then we'll take the time to answer a few of them live at the end. So please stick around and enjoy the presentation. Before we get started, I'd like to do a few introductions. Uh, there will be two SmartEye members speaking during this presentation, and both of those members work for the Research Instruments Division of SmartEye. So there's me, Aaron. Uh, I'm the sales engineer for North America. We also have Mr. Rob Wesley, one of our North American sales directors. And we will also be joined by Mr. Nam Nguyen, who is a senior neuroscience product specialist with iMotions, uh, one of SmartEye's analysis partners. I will now hand the presentation to Mr. Rob Wesley, who will explain in more detail the purpose of this webinar. Thanks, Aaron, and welcome everyone. So just to provide a bit of background, SmartEye has been working in the automotive industry for over 20 years. In fact, automotive research has been our foundation from day one. Throughout this time, we've worked with many OEMs and tier ones, and as a result, have developed some excellent insights into the issues and challenges faced by the industry's HMI engineers and researchers. Our goal today is to communicate some of these things that we've learned and to hopefully provide you with some helpful tools and solutions to address many of the challenges you will likely face in your automotive HMI work. So as a first step, we'll identify the issues and challenges facing the automotive HMI community. Second, we'll define some of the characteristics of tools and solutions that are needed to help HMI engineers and researchers. Third, we'll provide an understanding as well as a demonstration of how 3D remote head and eye tracking can assist with automotive research processes by enabling a more data-driven scientific approach. And lastly, we'll showcase how an integrated research platform that can combine head and eye tracking with other biometric sensors can greatly simplify and improve the analysis and visualization capabilities for HMI research studies. Let's go to the agenda page. Okay, so first let's look at some of the issues and challenges impacting the automotive HMI community. One of the biggest issues facing the automotive environment is the continual addition and constant change of consumer electronic devices that eventually migrate into the automotive cockpit. The development cycle for consumer electronic devices changes every few months, yet the automotive development cycle can take several years. So the ability to continually and quickly assess the potential HMI impacts of these devices will be essential. And also the ability to effectively evaluate HMI designs and changes will remain critical as well. In addition to this, as more ADAS systems are being deployed, it's becoming more and more important to monitor driver state and behaviors to ensure an effective and safe handoff of driving responsibility can take place. So let's look at some of the common challenges we see. First, how can we accurately assess the driver's ability to safely operate a vehicle while using these nomadic devices to ensure minimal distractions, maintaining eyes on the road, and maximizing the safety of the driver and occupants? Secondly, how can we deploy and integrate multiple assistance ass systems and consumer electronic devices into the vehicle environment without jeopardizing safety? And third, how can we objectively assess our HMI design changes to ensure they are not negatively impacting the driver? And last, how can we monitor driver state and behavior to reduce workload and drowsiness events, increase attentiveness, and even monitor for possible impairment? Let's take a look at the research and development needs. So now that we've identified some of the issues and challenges facing the automotive HMI community, let's look at some of the key features needed for the tools and solutions to help assist with these issues and challenges. The first key feature would be the tools should allow for naturalistic testing, 
Essentially, the driver should be able to operate the test vehicle or simulator in a manner that is completely natural, meaning no obstructive headgear, and the driver should be able to wear prescription glasses or sunglasses. Secondly, researchers need the ability to record, analyze, and visualize the driver state and behaviors. This includes being able to objectively analyze the driver's interactions to the vehicle interfaces, as well as the driver's interactions to the environment outside the vehicle. Some additional key features for these analysis tools should be environment flexibility, meaning they should be able to be used in simulators, in vehicle bucks for validation testing, and in production vehicles, and they should be able to test in all lighting conditions. Next, they should have phase adaptability, meaning you should be able to test across all phases of development, from initial concept and design, through product testing and validation, and well into production. Last, they should provide support for design optimization, meaning they should allow the capability to quickly and efficiently verify impacts of HMI optimization efforts through objective data analysis. The tool should also provide relevant and comprehensive head and eye tracking data that can be used to provide a data-driven approach to your HMI studies. They should also provide an API option to integrate with other biometric sensors and analysis software to expand capabilities for deeper analysis studies down the road. And last, regardless of environment or lighting conditions, the system's capabilities and results should be remain unchanged. So that's, next, let's look at how 3D eye tracking can assist with HMI design, development, and research. So eye tracking has been used for many years in various types of human factor studies within the automotive sector. Initially, many eye tracking systems were often cumbersome. Some required long setup times. They needed constant recalibration, and the data was often lost or difficult to assess. However, many advancements in eye tracking technology have made it more simplified, more effective, and much more useful for the automotive research community. As there are several methods of eye tracking available on the market, we want to stay aligned with the purpose of this webinar and focus on tools that best fit the automotive HMI research environment. For that reason, we'll focus on the remote method of eye tracking, specifically on the 3D remote multi-camera approach. We'll be discussing the unique features that contribute to the successful use of, the, of this technology in automotive research. So we'll start with a brief introduction to 3D remote eye tracking, and we'll discuss what differentiates this method from the others. So the first advantage for remote eye tracking is the fact there's no headgear or any other wearable devices which allows for completely natu naturalistic testing, as we discussed earlier. It allows for free movement of the driver both side to side, forward and backward, as well as the ability to test with other wearables such as sunglasses, prescription glasses, masks, hats, and even helmets. The small remote cameras can be easily integrated into the environment and configurable and customizable to the application, whether you're testing in a simulator, a vehicle buck, or a production vehicle. The multi-camera approach provides scalability and flexibility to allow the researcher to add or remove cameras to suit multiple applications and environments. Next, let me take a moment to explain the benefits of using a 3D wireframe architecture specifically for automotive HMI. As you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, we have a 3D wireframe which accurately replicates the research environment, in this case a vehicle. By using a 3D coordinate system, the head position, eye position, gaze vectors, as well as the objects in the research environment are displayed and output in a simple XYZ format. Now this is advantageous over other non-3D systems that provide only a gaze vector and that has to be recalculated after each head movement to determine where the gaze intersects with the environment. Using a 3D architecture, helps avoid this extra post-processing work and can save a lot of time and hassle. The 3D framework is created within minutes by using a simple laser tool with a chessboard pattern that is recognized by the camera and software. 
Once created, the 3D model allows you to, to measure everything from one stationary point of origin. And for automotive applications, you can even align the world model point of origin with the vehicle's point of origin, which is often the midpoint between the two front wheels. So alignment of these origins and axis and using the XYZ coordinates greatly simplifies the data usage and analysis over non-3D systems. So at this time, I'd like to hand the presentation back to my colleague, Aaron, to provide a demonstration of the 3D remote head and eye tracking in a vehicle environment. Thanks, Rob. <clears throat> Next, I'd like to show you SmartEye's approach to supporting automotive HMI research and development. Before I get into the video, I'd like to reiterate what we've discussed so far. So to recap what Rob's described so far, these are the major advantages to using a 3D remote multi-camera solution for eye tracking. We have the versatility of camera placement, compact camera size, customizable 3D model, a non-intrusive setup, in other words, the subject doesn't need to wear anything. The subject can move more naturally as the large head box offers a good freedom of movement. We can track subjects in any ambient lighting condition, should be rich in data output and the availability of that data output, and to have an API that's available for remote control of the software. So next, what I'd like to do is show you a demonstration of the key features of SmartEye Pro, SmartEye's 3D remote multi-camera eye tracking solution, and afterwards of Smart Recorder. SmartEye Pro is useful for tracking what the subject's looking at in the vehicles, as well as the near vicinity of the cabin, for instance, the side mirrors, whereas Smart Recorder is useful in tracking what the subject's looking at outside of the vehicle away from the cabin, for instance, a, a pedestrian in a crosswalk or an oncoming vehicle. Note that the following discussion, demonstrations, and examples are all based on a recording of a subject using a four camera, three flash SmartEye Pro system in a pickup truck. Okay, let's start with SmartEye Pro. For this demonstration, I'd like to show you some of the key features of SmartEye Pro that can assist with automotive HMI research and development. I'll be showing you a video recording that is looping in order to demonstrate various features of SmartEye Pro. This is not the typical use case for the software. Generally, our users do not record the subject and replay them in the software, but rather they treat SmartEye Pro as an eye tracking sensor and work directly with the data output created from the SmartEye Pro camera's live image feeds. First, let's start with the images window. In this configuration, I've placed the images window along the top viewable area. Note that all four camera feeds are visible and we can clearly see the subject's head and eyes. SmartEye Pro uses multiple cameras to track the subject from various angles. This means that if one camera cannot see the head, the face, or the eyes, there's probably another camera that can. This allows the software to maintain tracking across a wide viewable area, granting the subject much more freedom of movement. Note that about halfway through this recording, the subject will begin moving around while looking at various areas of interest, and he's doing this to demonstrate the robustness of the system's head and eye tracking. Using a multi-camera solution benefits automotive HMI research and development by granting flexible placement of the cameras. Since the cameras have a small form factor, they're not a distraction to the driver. Smarty Pro boasts a very large head box. The head box is the area where the cameras can sense or detect the head and track it. This large head box allows the subject a greater freedom of movement in comparison to other eye trackers. Regardless of the subject's natural movements, Smart Pro will be able to see the head and track the features necessary to provide meaningful information with respect to things such as head position, pitch, roll, tilt, etc. Keep in mind that camera placement is key to a good all around head box. The large head box is valuable as it allows SmartEye Pro to capture more head and eye data from the subjects, thus offering more robust recreation of the driving scenario via post-processing of the data. SmartEye Pro has the ability to work in almost any lighting condition as well. The recording being shown was taken on a bright sunny day, but the software works equally as well in the middle of the night. And this is because SmartEye Pro has its own infrared light source and the cameras utilize only that light, making the system insensitive to ambient light. So regardless of sun, rain, dawn, dusk, or dark, the system provides consistent data and results. Since Smart Pro produces its own light source, it's ideal for tracking subjects in both vehicles and in vehicle sims. 
Next, I'd like to discuss the 3D world model. Uh, so in the lower right hand corner, we can see the 3D world model window. Let's explore that a little bit more. The model shows the position of the cameras and flashes, as well as the world coordinate system origin. The world coordinate system origin is very important as all the Smart Eye Pro head data and gaze data is measured relative to it. As Rob mentioned earlier, Smart Eye Pro's world coordinate system origin can be aligned with the vehicle's coordinate origin to simplify data processing. So if we take a look here, we can see we have th four cameras in the system and three flashes. So we have camera number one, camera number two, camera number three, and camera number four, followed by flash number one, two, and three. And we can also see the world coordinate system origin. The green circle or sphere in this case that's moving around is the head as labeled. And we have the gaze protruding from the head as well. So you may be wondering, well, I don't really see a 3D model where exactly is it? This doesn't look particularly exciting. And I would agree with you. And that's because I haven't actually imported the world model yet. The world model is a wireframe model of the vehicle's environment that can be built using another tool that SmartEye provides called the laser chessboard tool. For the sake of this demonstration, I've already created a 3D model, so I'm going to go ahead and load that model now. Now, alongside the cameras, flashes, and world coordinate origin, the window is also displaying a wireframe model of some of the vehicle's areas of interest. There's a simple process to building this wireframe model, but I'll not cover that during the webinar. Rest assured, it's easy to build a model and the model is flexible enough to add or remove AOIs as required by different studies or vehicle configurations. The gaze vector is displayed as a red line protruding from the head, which is the green sphere. This is a consensus gaze vector. It can be split into individual eye vectors if desired. Occasionally, you'll see a blue circle on the end of the gaze vector. This indicates the gaze's intersection and location on an AOI. Note that the AOI also turns red to indicate the subject is looking at it. So the model truly is three-dimensional. I could, for instance, drag the model and look through the driver's side window. We could spin it to look through the passenger side window. Or if I wanted an overhead view, I could do that as well. Once again, this model is truly three-dimensional and is built using another tool. As you can see, every AOI and object also has a label. The AOI labels are also referenced in the data output uh, in the values window, which I will show you shortly. So the last Smart Eye Pro window that I'd like to cover is the values window, and that's on the bottom left here. This is the values window. I'd like to take the time to talk about the data available and output by Smart Eye Pro now. The system's rich in raw data as we provide roughly 145 data parameters, which are timestamped and easy to synchronize. This values window shows the current data value for all of the Smart Eye Pro output data parameters in real time, including additional information such as quality ratings on the data, uh, the AOI intersections, uh, et cetera. The values window contains a very comprehensive data set with the available data parameters. Keep in mind that any data parameters that use 3D coordinates are measured from the world coordinate system origin as shown previously in the world model window. So let's explore a couple that are relevant to automotive HMI R&D. First, we have information surrounding the head, the head position. So this gives us position, rotation. We're talking about the six degrees of freedom with the head here. Head position is useful for understanding not only the location of the head in 3D space, but also the orientation of the head. In this case, maybe at the tilt to determine is the driver drowsy? Are they looking down, for instance? We can take a look at gaze origin. And this shows the consensus gaze origin, but we also have individual eyes, left eye, right eye. And so it shows everything is tracked individually as well. This is the location of the eyes in 3D space. And then we can also take a look at other things such as maybe what's being intersected. So the world model or AOI gaze intersections here. Uh, these are useful for understanding what objects the subject's looking at and where exactly on those objects are they looking. And so we can see the three-dimensional location in space. We can see the two-dimensional location relative to the object. And we can also see the object's name on the end in the brackets. 
And this object name aligns with the world model object name that was shown in the world model window. Lastly, we can get into things like eyelid opening and pupil diameter. And both of these parameters, alongside head position data, are frequently used for detecting driver drowsiness, state of impairment, or alertness style studies. So next I'd like to discuss Smart Eye Pro's data availability. The data on Smart Eye Pro is accessible through a few different ways. Of course, the data is available to be viewed in the values window, as I've just shown, but it's also possible to transmit the data real time via a UDP stream to a local program on a PC or externally via ethernet to a simulator, for example. You can create a TCP connection and it will contain the same information available on the UDP stream, just not real time. In more rare use cases, Smart Eye Pro can send a subset of its data, about 40 of the data parameters onto the CAN bus. And last, but definitely not least, the data can be logged to a text file, which can then be open for further analysis in spreadsheet programs such as Excel or in data processing programs such as MATLAB. All of the values available in the values window are also available in the text log file, the UDP stream, the TCP connection, etc. There are different categories for the output data. So you can see those categories. This allows you to pick and choose which parameters or categories you would like to be included with the output data. So if you're not interested in certain information, you can take it out. Or if you're only interested, for instance, in eyelid reported data, you can only include the eyelid data. Note that all of these means of accessing the data are available in parallel as well. So it's perfectly fine to have a UDP stream sending data to a simulator while locally logging a text file, for instance. Smart Eye Pro also provides an API for controlling it remotely. So a program local to the Smart Eye Pro PC can control it, or Smart Eye Pro can be controlled remotely via an ethernet connection uh, from another PC or simulator, for instance. So this allows other PCs and simulators to run the Smart Eye Pro software without need for peripheral interfaces. Finally, Smart Eye has partnered with a few data analysis and biometric sensor tool companies for visualization and analysis of the Smart Eye Pro output data. One of these partner software, iMotions, will be discussed shortly. So this demonstration has shown how Smart Eye Pro allows you to view and track a subject's gaze, as well as visualize it on various AOIs. Smart Eye Pro doesn't have the ability to visualize what the subject's looking at in the distant real world environment, though. So, next, I'd like to show you how to take Smart Eye Pro's gaze tracking and visualize it in the real world environment. If you're interested in tracking what a subject might be looking at outside of the vehicle, for instance, a pedestrian or another vehicle, then we have a solution for that as well. This is Smart Recorder. Smart Recorder is a supplemental tool that Smart Eye sells, which can take in video stream data from a scene camera and combine it with the Smart Eye Pro output data, uh, for instance, the gaze data, for the purpose of displaying the subject's gaze overlaid onto the real world environment. To demonstrate this, you're currently viewing the result of a Smart Recorder gaze overlay recording. Note that we recorded this video using the same exact Smart Eye Pro setup that was just shown. As you watch the video, you should be able to tell where the subject's looking, sometimes at mailboxes, a few people, parked and moving vehicles, and a few times at a water tower in the distance or the top of a tree. There are a few instances where the gaze is not shown on the video, and this is normal and expected. It shows a time where the subject was not looking in an area where the scene camera can capture their gaze. For example, drivers often look out the side window while making a turn or down from the windshield while looking at an instrument cluster. As to configuration of the Smart Recorder software, there is a short calibration procedure in order to train Smart Recorder about where a subject's looking. It typically uses a process where known stationary objects are looked at. Any static object or marking is acceptable as long as both the subject and the scene camera can see the object. The subject's gaze is then calibrated to these real world objects through Smart Recorder's connection to Smart Eye Pro. Once the calibration is completed, it's possible to capture the Smart Eye Pro gaze data in conjunction with the video data. Once the gaze data and video capture are done, the pertinent data files will be exported and flattened into what you're currently seeing, and that is gaze data overlaid onto video recording. And so Smart Recorder is another tool in Smart Eye's toolbox for understanding where a subject's looking and can be quite helpful when trying to understand why a subject was looking at a particular location, for instance, on the windshield. 
Was there a pedestrian or a vehicle there? Maybe an animal ran in front of the vehicle. For more in-depth analysis and visualization of the output data, the software our partners provide is suggested. To show the power of one such tool, I'll now hand the presentation to Mr. Nam Nguyen. He will provide you with an overview of the benefits of using the iMotion biometric analysis software alongside SmartEye Pro, including a demonstration. Thank you, Aaron, and thank you, Rob. Uh, hi, this is Nam, and I'm very excited to be able to present to you a little bit more about the integration that we've done with SmartEye Pro System uh, in order to help some of our HMI uh, space clients uh, gain insights into the types of questions that they're looking for. Uh, before we get into a little bit of the live data that we've collected a little bit earlier, I'm going to just kind of dive into a little bit about what iMotions is. iMotions came about as a software in order to help researchers integrate multiple biosensors into an easy to use research data collection platform. Uh, previously, uh, you might be interested in using a tool like SmartEye in order to assess attention, but if you were then looking to try to also bring in something like facial expressions to look at whether they were smiling or they were frowning in order to assess a state of emotions when they were paying attention to it, oftentimes you would have to have separate software, sometimes on separate computers, and then do a lot of data aggregation and, and clipping the of data afterwards together. Uh, in order to then accelerate this, iMotions has uh, formed partnerships with a variety of, uh, of awesome hardware partners such as SmartEye in order to integrate all that information into a single easy to use platform. Uh, this can then makes, you, makes it easy for you to look at things like facial expressions uh, for emotions, uh, electrodermal activity for excitement and arousal to EEG for drowsiness, which will allow you to get deeper insights into the way that your drivers are uh, experiencing the types of HMI designs or as well as other types of driving uh, states that you might be interested in, different types of cognitive and psychological phenomena, so to speak. Uh, by having all this information together in one location, uh, you're able to focus more time on, on looking at the designs and how it affects uh, individuals. You're able to leverage advanced technologies easily without having to, uh, to learn them from scratch. Uh, you're able to eliminate patchwork solutions so that it works re more reliably more often, with thus reducing time and costs, uh, increasing the amount of research that you're able to do, increasing that validity that you can actually then have. So uh, let me actually show you a little bit more about what that looks like and what the integration actually uh, looks like. So again, iMotions allows you to record and organize your sessions for easy research management and then integrate in multiple biosensors here. Uh, right you're seeing on the screen right now is a, uh, an example of the setup calibration where we have the camera set up and you're just monitoring them on some screens. By leveraging the uh, world model that Aaron and Rob have been describing a little bit earlier, you're able to then add in, say, an additional web camera or, or any other type of camera uh, into the setup very easily and align the, uh, the world model objects from that perspective. Uh, once you've done so, then you're able to then visualize where that person is paying attention to from that camera's perspective, which then makes it easy for you to do various types of analysis, visualize the, uh, the data underneath, such as pupil size, uh, distance to the eye tracker, as well as all the other information. You're then able to take that information and then leverage our uh, very powerful eye tracking analytics package to look at things like heat maps and areas of interest that I'll show you uh, a little bit more in depth in just a minute on a, on a real study. But this just then makes it easier for you to draw comparisons uh, on different aspects within the environment quite easily. So let me just go ahead and jump into the replay. So here we have uh, Rob driving around in his truck, and you can see that his truck is outfitted with, uh, with the Smart Eye Pro system. So if we kind of zoom in on the image here, uh, which is then tracking his eye tracking within the cabin, which has been uh, mapped out using the uh, laser chessboard tool, as you can see. Uh, when, uh, when I actually hit play, you're then able to then visualize exactly in that moment in time how he's uh, driving and actually then experiencing the, uh, the HMI uh, within the vehicle itself. There's lots of options for visualization, uh, but afterwards you're then able to then uh, leverage our analysis platform for deep insights. Over on this side, we have another camera placed on the dashboard that is going through our facial expression software ana uh, analysis software, which is also allowing us to generate different amounts of facial expression levels. So as he's driving around, if something were to anger him or to cause a facial expression of fear, you're then able to, to understand that in the moment, and then you can then dive into what exactly is causing that by looking at the eye tracking. 
Let's go ahead and take a little bit more about what the analysis uh, steps actually look like. When you go into an analysis inside iMotions, you're able to then uh, generate a variety of different eye tracking metrics quite easily. Um, you can take a look at heat maps, which allows you to take a look at the distribution of attention across the uh, the dashboard, where he spent the majority of his time, where he ignored, in order to help drive your HMI design as well as decisions. Uh, if you're for more in-depth analysis, you're able to draw out areas of interest or AOI. So, you know, did he spend any of time looking at these different areas, which you can then graph quite easily within our software in order to make uh, easy to interpret comparisons of time spent, order of uh, attention, and a variety of other metrics that you might be interested in. And then by leveraging our deeper analytics package uh, in terms of other sensors, you're also then able to then take a look at, say, things like Galvanic Skin Response, to look at excitability, EEG, uh, and a variety of other signals that we can then uh, interpret and bring in. Uh, to kind of uh, highlight this, let's actually look at some studies that we actually did on site with a client out there. So this is a study that we did at the Bondurant High Performance Driving School, and here we have a, uh, a trained uh, race car driver uh, driving around uh, quite aggressively on the track. Uh, you can see the world model uh, being activated here, and in here the client was interested in understanding how uh, specific drivings as a function of a, a driver's experience level changed in terms of uh, where they um, actually paid attention to. Um, Rob was actually on site with the client out there and can describe a little bit more about what he experienced with uh, this particular client. Yeah, sure. This is one of those really fun customer visits that uh, we often get to do. So uh, our friends from Bondurant contacted us and, and they wanted to uh, evaluate their trainees. Uh, Bondurant has a, a fleet of 80 Dodge Hellcats and these, these cars are pushing up to 700 horsepower. So it's a very aggressive format as you can imagine, but Bondurant wanted to to combine not only where the trainee is looking, but they wanted to look at their emotional state. They wanted to see how they were responding to their environment. And they also wanted to tie that together with some of the vehicle information, such as wheel speed, such as braking and things like that. And so using the combined uh, integration of SmartEye and iMotions, we were able to do that very well. They were able to show their trainees exactly where they were looking versus where they should be looking, especially you know, in, in approaching a curve, looking at the correct entry, point looking at the apex of the oncoming curve and then looking at the exit points and they were able to show that along with the the emotional response and the in the uh, car data information so this uh, this integration really shows the power of of smart eye as well as eye emotions and really and how robust it is i mean this is a very aggressive environment and so, yeah, this just highlights again some of the usefulness in terms of this types of research. So you're able to do, say, uh, immediate think aloud, so you can ask them what they're looking at, uh, and then as well as just seeing what they are actually looking at from the sensor data. You could then uh, afterwards then ask them questions based off of specific moments of time, such as whether or not they're engaged or uh, or turned out. Um, that kind of wraps up my presentation with this. Uh, go ahead and thank you. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you, Dom. <clears throat> so uh, we've reached the end of the presentation portion of the webinar, but uh, don't leave just yet. If you have any questions, we'd love to answer those. So uh, there have been a few questions asked so far. Uh, please bear with me one moment while I look through them and select a few for discussion. In the meantime, if you have any questions you'd like to ask us, please use the Q&A section of the interface. OK. Uh, so first question I see is, how long does the calibration process take? I can take that one. So there's there's really two types of calibration. Uh, the first is the system calibration. And essentially, uh, after you set up your cameras, um, all you need to do is show the cameras this chessboard pattern. It's, it's a recognizable pattern to the cameras. It takes about five to 10 seconds. And then once you're done with that, you, you're ready to go. The other calibration is, is more like a, a profile. This is a test subject profile. And so when you get a new person in for testing, 
um, we have to understand how their eyes are designed. Everybody's focal points are in a different location. So all you have to do is simply have three or four calibration points set up in your environment and you'll have the person look at it, hit a button, look at the next calibration point, hit a button and so forth. That process takes about 30 to 60 seconds. And then that what, what that does is it actually creates the user profile for that specific person. You only have to do that once. Uh, you can save that profile and use it for future use. So it really improves the accuracy uh, of the gaze. But that's about it. OK, thanks, Rob. Mm -hmm. So next question is, how long does it usually take to set up a vehicle? I will go ahead and answer that one. So on average, I would say it's about a two hour process to set up a vehicle from start to finish. Uh, it basically takes or involves placement of the cameras, uh, running the cables so that they aren't uh, interfering with the driver's space, uh, putting the lights in the right location, and then building the world model as we've described earlier. So the ability to then visualize where somebody's looking uh, within the cabin uh, and uh, uh, track where they're looking on various AOIs. Uh, so again, yeah, it's, it's about two hours or so. Okay. Uh, next question, is it possible to record driver and passenger simultaneously? Uh, hi, Aaron. Uh, I'll go ahead and field that question. Um, yes, it is absolutely possible to record uh, two individuals at the same time. However, it will take two separate hardware and software setups. So you will s separately uh, set up your own computers and hardware systems uh, within at the same time. And then what you're able to do is independently start recording on each of the individual systems and then afterwards import like one recording into the study of another system. Uh, in that way, you're then able to look at both individuals within the same study um, and then analyze their, their experiences. OK, thanks, Tom. So I have a question that says, uh, will a video recording of the webinar be provided? And the answer to that, I will just go ahead and answer that. Yeah, the answer to that is yes. Uh, the same link uh, that you're using now can be revisited in the future to watch the video recording. Next question, uh, can CAN bus data be brought into iMotions? Uh, yeah, so Yes, iMotions has within it a, uh, an integrated API, which will allow you to bring in and out uh, any sort of data that you can get to the iMotion software. Um, there are some specific formatting um, constraints such as uh, TCP or UDP uh, recording. Um, the, however, with CAN bus data specifically, there are a few uh, specific constraints. Um, while with the CAN bus, there are um, a certain amount of time resolution. Uh, you have to check to make sure that that it is within the types of uh, of data that you're looking for, as well as the data types. So there's a there's certain amounts of of CAN bus that is universal, and then there's a, a lot of it, quite a lot of it, that's actually proprietary within the uh, individual make and manufacturer of the vehicle. And if you're able to, uh, so it's a question of if you're able to access that that information to get the types of uh, information that you're looking for. Okay, thanks. So we have a couple more minutes. We can wait uh, if there's any additional questions. OK, so um, there are more, no more questions I can see at this time. So if you do have any additional questions or would like a demo, please feel free to contact us for more details. And we do have some upcoming webinars planned. Please stay tuned to our webpage, emails, and social media for information on these upcoming webinars. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Once again, thank you for attending this Smart Eye Research Instruments webinar, and bye for now. <laughs>